Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to do some tips and tricks for Unreal Engine 4. So recently I decided to try to diversify the content on my channel so it can be a little bit more interesting for you guys and maybe someone is going to be helped by my suggestions. So today I've decided to do some tips and tricks for the workflow in Unreal Engine 4 as I said and as well how to improve your performance and efficiency overall while creating blueprints. It is really important to be efficient while doing them because if you're not going to, let's say you're going not to be organized, for example, your blueprint is going to get messed up pretty fast. So without further ado, let's go and jump straight into the first tip. So tip number one, docking tabs. It is as easy as it sounds, but I haven't seen a lot of people doing it. They might not need it or some of them might not even know how to do it. I recently found out that you can actually dock them and it is pretty easy to do it. So here you can see on the screen that I'm pressing left mouse button and I'm dragging the tab around. You can see that some weird things are appearing on the screen. You can think of them as 3D cubes. Those are the places where you can dock your tabs to. This is this so-called tool is pretty handful to access multiple things at the same time, enhancing your efficiency a lot. So my favorite thing to do with docking is getting a new viewport to use it for the, for the secondary viewport when I'm doing level designs. It is really useful so I can see the entire time the player's perspective, which is really nice because sometimes, actually always in level designing, there are some parts that the player can't actually see, so there is no reason to add things in there. Because that way the scene is going to be pretty messy and aside being messy, it is going to have a bad performance, which is not good for levels. So this way it's really useful and you can dock, I think, almost all tabs, if not actually all of them. And I highly suggest you to use them when you can. I actually use them. Every time in my tutorials, there is one tab called Level, close to the global settings or world settings. And there, I'm using that for my game switch, to switch between the sub-levels and the, and the persistent level. Docking your tabs is really useful because you can actually get access to all the tabs real fast and you don't need to switch between all the tabs and minimize something and then close it and open something else. It's really easy to access them and I got to say that it was pretty hard to discover what to actually do and I did it by accident. It works just as well if you know in Google Chrome and I think that goes for Firefox as well. You just need to click on the actual tab, not the top bar and it is going to be redocked to some other docking station. Tip number two, the good old shortcuts. Really handy to create nodes real fast. Just keep a specific button pressed and press leftmost button and so like that a new node will appear in the graph editor. This isn't the only shortcut that you can access as well if you're going to keep pressing control or left alt and you're going to drag a variable, you'll notice that it won't ask you if you want it to be set or get and it will make it to be one of those based on the key you press. I usually use this especially in my tutorials because it is way easier to do so. If you still don't want to drag your mouse to reach all the variables, you can easily just type set or get and then the variable's name and press enter. We'll cover a little bit later in the video how to use shortcuts to their maximum capacity, so for now this is only the basic notion. One shortcut key that I really love is keeping B pressed and then left mouse button the event graph. Uh, if you're going to do this, it is going to spawn you a branch inside the event graph and branches are really useful and they're used pretty much everywhere and so this way you can easily access them. As well, what I use a lot, of, many, a lot of times is pressing space while moving an object into the viewport. This way I can switch between rotation, orientation or scale. And as well you can use W, uh, E and R. W is for moving it around, E is for rotation, I think, and R is for scale. But I might be wrong here. Tip number three, stay organized. There is nothing worse than a bad looking blueprint. Everything will be messy and if you ever need to change something, it will be a hard time to do it. Always try to add reroute nodes to make the blueprint a little bit better looking. There are other ways as well, such as straightening a connection between blueprints, commenting the blueprint to know exactly what everything does and I highly recommend you do it, using functions or custom events for functionality that is going to repeat 
to a, to the blueprint multiple times. Also, I highly recommend to promote everything that can be promoted to a variable, that way you can access the value easier. But not only blueprints have to look nice, the content browser has to do that as well. You can easily create folders by going into the content browser, then right clicking while the cursor is over it, and going to create the folder. Folders can have different names and as well, a good thing to do is to color them. By doing that, there is a chance you'll memorate them and next time you'll see that specific color, it is going to be easier for your brain to notice the folder. Usually changing blueprints after they are done, it's a pretty hard thing to do. And if it's going, it is going to be a lot harder if you are going to be messy. So better stay organized, everything is going to be looking good and easy, especially if you're going to work with a team. If you're going to have, let's say, two programmers, one, both are going to do the blueprints, then that is going to be really hard to understand what the other one did and so on. Tip number four, always test a new mechanic to see if it works. The same thing applies to every piece of blueprint. Also for the debugging, you can easily use print strings to identify where the problem is located at. Once you locate the problem, look to the entire piece of blueprint and find a solution. Looking again to the entire piece is very important. It will let you see where you might have done a mistake that maybe didn't affect the gameplay immediately but later in the blueprint. This way you won't waste time and notice only after a few minutes, a few hours or maybe a few days that your blueprint is broken. Having mechanics and blueprints that you can rely on is really important. The gameplay has to be smooth and so the game overall is going to be better. This is why it's so important to stay organized and make sure that you're going to test it every time because the mechanics are one of the main things in the games besides graphics and maybe story if you're going to do one like that. If you just did a mechanic or a piece of blueprint and you don't have time to see if it's good or not, ask somebody to do it. It is really important. One thing that you can do is actually package the game uh, and set the packaging option to be in development and not final build or however it's called because that way you can actually see blueprints too and sometimes launching the game instead of just playing the editor is going to make a major difference. In my game Switch I had one of those problems where two names were different so if I'm going to play in the editor the name is going to be different from when I'm going to launch the game. So make sure that you're going to do it both ways to make sure that it's going to be good. And the final and the fifth tip for today's video, customize the editor. So. Many of you might know that there are multiple way, multiple ways to play in the editor such as selected viewport, new editor window, standalone game and simulate. These are the main ways to play in the editor. The difference aren't too big, almost non-existent. The only difference between simulate and all the other is that simulate won't possess the character automatically. Also there are all the editor preferences. It is located under the edit tab at the top. There you have a lot of options to choose from. There you can find all the shortcuts on the keyboard as well as you can customize all of them for your own personal preference. Customizing as many shortcuts as you can is a really good thing. So as I, as I said previously with the B for the branch, you can let's say set P for the print string and I don't know, all the functions or nodes that you know, you can just shortcut them there as well. You can use Ctrl and Alt to create, uh, to create a combination of keys to access them. So this is really useful, a lot easier to work there. Currently I have none set up but I'll probably do that because I'm sure it is going to be a lot easier for me. So guys, it's pretty much all for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed the video and if you learned something new from it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As well, don't forget to tell me in the comments below what do you think about this type of videos. I've been planning to do more because I have a lot of ideas and how to actually give good suggestions to you guys to make sure that your games are the best and they're really, really easy to create. Tell me in the comments below as I said, I'm really looking forward to your feedback. And as well, thanks for the support lately. I really appreciate that you guys are liking my content and all that good stuff. So guys, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.